All right, welcome you guys to Butler Kennels Rottweilers. As you guys can tell by the uh, title, uh, so you want to become a Rottweiler breeder. All right, you just want to be a breeder, period. Um, what goes into it, you know, what all stuff you have to do? Um, is it a lucrative um, job? Is it something that you do because you love it? Um, you got a beautiful big old pup. And now everyone's telling you, hey, man, I love your dog. You got puppies. Let me know. So now you're thinking, hey, I can probably try to sell some puppies and make some money. Well, we'll get into all of that in a second. But first, before you do anything, anything, hit that subscribe button if you have not done it yet. If you've not done so yet, please hit that subscribe button, the like button, and comment below what you think about this video. Or if you have... Um, suggestions or questions about um, starting breeding and anything else give us a call um, or give us a comment below if you do uh, we'll go from there right <laughs> so this is a six week old pup man yes I said a six week old pup right show them guys where you are man show them guys what we do here this is a I will say the male this is a sting puppy right so this is off of Sting's production, six weeks old. The reason why I say that, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, gotta get a whole puppy, I want a whole puppy to get a big dog, or whatever the case is, no. All of our dogs produce top, top quality, as you can see. Um, so anyway, I know I don't have all the right care on. Man, I've been cleaning up and I've been doing a lot of stuff. So you guys know me, I'm not about the glitz and glamor of my videos. My videos is to the point. My videos are about informing you guys uh, about quality and what to look out for and about us so um first thing is uh so you want to be a rottweiler breeder or, or you want to become a breeder um if you look around you see facebook you see instagram you see youtube you see a lot of people now starting to breed dogs and you're like man everyone's coming up with a name now they have their names and now they're like hey i have a kennel and you're like i never heard this kennel before where they came from uh a lot of people are inspiring to become breeders and nothing is wrong with that. Um, I even created a page that allows up and coming breeders to showcase their dogs um, as well. So I don't want anybody thinking that I'm trying to stop people from breeding. If you guys watch my videos, you guys clearly see I am an advocate for supporting up and coming breeders to be successful and being um, producing top quality dogs, um, you know, um, like bam. Like a butler kennel. And you know, before I say anything, you guys see this dog's head, man. Now, a lot of times you see a lot of breeders do this here. They do like this, and they'll show you the picture and say, oh, look at that big old head, dog. But our dog has regardless. So, regardless of what it is, they're always big and top quality, right? Um, let me turn this notification off because Lord knows it's going to be a lot of. Um, a lot of dinging and all that notification stuff going on so anyway so I advocate a lot for up-and-coming breeders um, to showcase their dogs so what I'm about to say is going to be just clearly and strictly my opinions about certain things positive things negative things what to look for what not to look for um, what's going on what do I see um, the business going to as far as the Rottweiler breeder um, breed itself and everything else so um, First thing foremost is a lot of people, first thing is they get a, a beautiful dog and they're like, maybe they want to breed, they don't want to breed or whatever. Let's say, for example, they get a beautiful pup like this from Butler Kennel Rockwaters, right? And they're like, man, I don't want to breed, I just want a big old family pet. Now, with us, is even if this is a family pet, it's still a top quality dog. I don't breed dogs for, um, some dogs are just for show, some dogs are just for family pet. All of our dogs are top quality regardless. Um, so when you get a dog, let's say Jimmy guys a dog, this is Jimmy's dog, and Jimmy says, hey, I don't wanna breed. All right, I'm not really looking to breed or whatever. So Jimmy gets a dog and his dog gets big and every, every time Jimmy walks his dog down the road, someone stops him and says, hey man, hey, when you gonna have puppies, let me know, man, keep me on the list, da da da. Now we all know, 95% of the time someone stops you on the road and whatever the case is stops you in mid action because he sees a beautiful dog That's an impulse reaction. I want a puppy and all that kind of stuff. So I get it 
Um, 5% of the time, someone is really serious, they'll be looking for a dog that's happening running to you. But most times the impulse to see a dog, hey, put me on the list. So now you start thinking, hey, everybody wants my dog, so I should become a breeder, you know, let me start breeding and, and get some money into this thing back or whatever the case is. Um, typical thinking, and it's totally fine. Um, but when you get to the fact that you say, hey, you know what? How much is gonna go into me breeding this dog, right? How much time, how much uh, effort, um, dedication, commitment, and all that kind of stuff goes into it? No one thinks about that. Most times before people start breeding, they start thinking about, oh, I can make some money. Can you make money? Yes. There's a lot of breeders out there that's saying, oh, I breed, you don't make any money at all, da 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 da, whatever. That's could be true for them. And a lot of times making money does end up even for a while and that's very true because you have to invest into your business um those that get money right quick and just take some money and do it and has nothing to show for it because they didn't invest back into what they have and you're not going to just get a male and a female have some puppies and make a lot of money you're not okay so let's just blow that out the way um so much money you're going to put into these things that's going to cost money if you notice on all of my videos i tell everyone take your time I have never in my life told someone, hurry up and buy this dog, man, or you're gonna miss out. No, because if you do that, you're gonna hurt yourself, the puppy, your family, and everyone else, right? So what you should do first is, before you decide to even call me or any breeder in the world, um, before you decide to breed it, you and your spouse, or if you have a spouse, if you're single, take some notes down first and say, hey, what is my budget that I can afford to purchase a dog? Just like buying a house you a house may cost ten dollars and you have ten dollars in your pocket you still can't afford that house because you have to think light bill electric bill land tax um you know all those stuff furniture everything else the same thing with the dog um buying the dog is only the first part maintaining that dog and as the dog gets older it's going to cost you more money right um as well so take that in consideration as well too um, when you go from that point now that you decided you and your spouse or yourself um, you looked in the mirror, you consulted yourself and you decided to say hey you know what now I can't afford this dog or whatever the case is what's the next step? Next step is okay now I have the, the funds to buy the dog, now I get the dog do you have enough time for this dog that this dog will be able to have enough room to exercise and are you going to have enough time to spend with it? Are you, if it's just you and you go on vacations and you got a trip to go home to or if you got to go back to a different state, who's going to watch your dog for you? Who's going to do this, that and everything else? Um, one of the biggest thing is, uh, <laughs> one of the biggest thing is uh, people don't think about those things when they get a dog. Um, you know, they just give it to someone else or who's going to be able to watch your dog as well, too. So you get into that. Um, another thing you got to think about, too, is um, it's a lot of work that goes into training these dogs, right? A lot of people just get a dog thinking that the dog is going to get there. It's going to be perfect. The dog is going to automatically be like Bujo, the dog they had before. Each dog is different. No two kids are exactly alike. Now they may share a lot of characteristics of the same, but no two dogs are the exact same. So don't try to replace one dog with another dog because all you're gonna do is look for this dog to do exactly what the other dog did and you're going to, you're going to actually be a little angry with yourself that this dog isn't turning out as that dog, but this dog is his own entity. So um, don't try to buy a dog to replace another dog, right? Um, you can get another dog to um, fill a void of loving a dog, um, but that dog that passed away or you don't have anymore as a kid or whatever, um, those are memories and those are great memories. You hold on to those, but don't try to make this dog fulfill what your other dogs did first, all right? Um, biggest mistake a lot of people do. Um, what's up, man? What's up? Okay. I'm doing a video, man. I'm doing a video shoot, bro. Bro, bro you're doing a video shoot. Look, you're doing a video shoot. Don't do all this. This dog is heavy, man. I'm gonna tell you, six weeks old. Six weeks. Yes, I said six weeks. Man, you guys don't understand how much. I'm gonna show you how, man. Let me see. This is my laptop. 
This is a laptop. Look at this. Six weeks old. <laughs> Bigger than my laptop. <laughs> and this is a full size. This isn't that small one. This is a big, huge laptop. Um, man, I can do things like compare him to the world. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. This is a little small globe. But you'll see um, how big this dog really is, man. Um, as well. Anyway, so back to realistic stuff. Um, I'm gonna hold like a baby. Okay. Um, expenses. It's gonna cost a lot to take care of a dog. Think about how many for the vet bill, even for an outstanding healthy dog, um, things are gonna happen. Um, but let's say, for example, 100% healthy dog, you gotta go into the expenses, upkeep, vet bills, food bills, maintenance bills, the house that the dog's gonna be in, the concrete is gonna be on, or the fencing, the material, the, bro, bro, I'm trying, okay, yeah, you happy for yours, you got yours already? Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, everything, man, it's, 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 a, it's an expense that I want people to really understand is not just as simple as just saying, hey, I got a dog, so I'm gonna stop breeding and do this. And this is not only just for breeding, this is for anybody that owns a dog. Uh, I'm just going over the main facts of just owning a dog. I haven't even really gotten to the breeding part. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times, um, a lot of times people get to the fact of thinking that, hey, uh, I got a dog from overseas now, so I'm gonna become a breeder, and I got a top-notch dog because it came from overseas, and I was able to import a dog, and all this stuff here. And, and a lot of times you ask these breeders questions like, ah! <laughs> you ask these breeders about their dogs and they can't tell you anything about them. So make sure that this breeder that you're about to buy or that breeder has an understanding. Where does, or if you're about to, if you're planning on becoming a breeder and you're watching this video, think to yourself first, understand the breed first. I got a lot of people calling me about, hey man, I used to breed pit bulls or bullies and I don't do it no more. I'm looking at you, man. I want to be a Rottweiler breeder. I see there's a lot of mess that goes on in the pit bull world. There's, man, there's a lot of mess that goes on in the Rottweiler world. There's a lot of hatred, a lot of people that's jealousy, a lot of enviousness, um, a lot of craziness, a lot of just stupid stuff, man. Any job, and that's whether job you, any job you have at home or anything else or whatever you do, not even in the dog world, just all things you do. So. Um, it is a lot that goes into it as far as this. So when you see someone that says, hey man, I got a dog from overseas. Overseas does not mean you got a quality dog. There are crap breeders overseas that's garbage that I won't even pay a dollar for in Germany or Russia or Serbia or wherever you're getting your dog from. There's garbage breeders over there as well too. Yes, I said it, I don't care if you get offended or you think, oh, because the dog came from Germany is a top dog, no. God, no. I don't care about... And like I said, this is my personal opinion. So if you got a problem with it, then, you know, whatever. Um, it's true. A lot of guys have never even been overseas to Germany even understand what they do in Germany. You get this perception of being in Germany or overseas in, um, in Europe. And I have a lot of friends in Europe. A lot of breeders in overseas, of course. I buy a lot of dogs from there. And a lot of people think that... Um, the perception that the world gives you is that overseas is beautiful kennels and big beautiful dogs and you see the glamorous pictures and all that stuff and you see this professional picture taken of this dog in the perfect pose and you're like oh god they're the top breeders and everything else if that's what you want to believe then sure but um truth of the matter is this is just like people here in the united states um of course they do a lot of shows over there they do a lot of um you know a lot of qualifications for their dogs and everything else i think they do a lot well i know they do a lot more than what goes on in the united states here but um i've seen dogs here that's in the united states that have champions in it that's won titles and look like crap um so when you look at where's my uh, my book my books over there before i leave i'll show you so a lot of times you'll that's why you won't see me advertising about my dog being top world champions and everything else in my bloodline and I don't mean far back, it's right there. Um, I don't care about that. I care about it to a certain extent, but it's not the selling point of my dogs. Cause I can show you dogs that are champions from mom and dad and puppies look like crap and their dog, I wouldn't even pay a dollar for. It's just me. So certain things I look for in a dog and I want you guys to understand what you're looking for. Don't let people fool you by saying, I got a German rock 
This is not a German rock wallow. This is not. Not because of the coat, not because of the color, not because of the ears or the head or anything. This dog is going to be top notch. This dog's dad is from Serbia. This dog's mom is from Russia. They're not, this puppy is American because it was born here in America. Now the bloodline of my dogs are from Europe. So don't let people tell you Hulk is a Russian Rottweiler. The one that everybody always asks about Hulk and everything. Hulk is not German. Hulk is Russian. So any kids that come off of Russia, I mean Hulk or anything else, is going to be an American. I can't get that clear to you guys. Hey, people call, you got a German Rottweilers? I watch all your videos, man. I watch all your videos. I hear you talking, man, but I want a German one. Okay. What's the difference? So when I ask the question, I'm just really being sarcastic, really, but trying to, not sarcastic to the point where I'm just trying to be a butt, but I'm trying to do it to the point where you understand, man, because knowledge is power, and I don't want anyone being fooled by these people with these fake pages or even real pages saying German Rottweilers over here, because no one in America that breeds Rottweilers here in America that our puppies are born here have German Rottweilers. I don't care. Now, my, I have German Rottweiler dogs that I have, but my puppies will never be German or American or whatever. I mean, they would be American, but they won't be German. Um, their bloodlines are, they're from that area, so they, they have that bloodline. So when you see their paperwork, you see all that stuff there or whatever. So enough of that. Um, so education is key. So before you're thinking about becoming a breeder, now you gotta tell yourself, educate yourself. Because you got a beautiful dog, I know a lot of people got beautiful, beautiful Rottweilers. Don't know a thing about their dogs. Telling everyone they got German rods or telling people, yeah, man, it's this and that or um, whatever. Educate yourself on the dog first. And it takes more than just, you got a puppy so you think you know everything about a dog because you had that. Raise my hand, I was one of those guys first, so I'm not telling you anything that, you know, that's not like, hey, I put myself in it too. I'll let you guys know. When I first started breeding uh, 15 years ago, man, I thought after my first litter, I was the man. First litter sold out before they were born. People wanted the dogs. But the one thing that kept me grounded was the fact that I was always honest, number one. Um, I never, uh, if I didn't know anything about it, I tried to do my research. And some things I learned as I go, you're not going to know it all. I don't expect anybody to starting off breeding. And even breeders who've been doing, 15 years I've been doing this, and, and I will gladly probably tell you guys, I don't know everything. Um, so you guys that's calling me to saying, hey, man, I know you know. No, I'm not going to try to lie and tell you guys I know it all. I do not, okay? I do not. I would love to know it all, but I educate myself every day about this breed. Every time I go out there with these dogs, I learn something new. Um, this puppy and his sister, our brother, is different than him. His characteristics is different. My brothers that I have, I'm different than all, all of them. You know what I mean? Um... So we all came from the same mom and dad, but we are different, um, you know? So understanding, you just can't go by and say, oh, all rock walls are this, all rock walls are that. No, they're not. Um, you know, understanding, dude, look at this way, look. <laughs> all right, I'm trying to get this dummy up for this dog. So anyway, um, so once you do that, you understand um, the knowledge about the dogs, understanding that um, you're going to spend a lot of money, man. I mean, I can't keep going back to that. I'm going to let you know. You're going to spend a lot of money. You're going to lose money before you make it, if you do at all. There are, it's like a job. Um, it's like a, a job. There are some successful computer geeks out there that does computers and I mean make a fortune off of it. There's some computer people right now that barely struggling to get by. You know, they both do computers. It's about how much are you going to invest into it. Um, a little bit about me, uh, it it took me one time seven years to even go on a vacation. Um, I'm dedicated, man, putting it in. People now see this grind and think like, oh, he got the big name, he's worldly known, he does it. He started an overnight success. Man, no, 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 no. And even when the world was looking at it as success, in my head, I was looking at it as like, man, I'm struggling getting this done, I'm getting that done. I never try to pretend to be something I'm not, never try to put on a show with something I wasn't. Um, even though for 15 years, every litter I've had has sold out before they were born, I still struggle to the point of 
certain areas on the dog. Now, you may be a great person that have quality dogs, and then you have some people out there that has top-notch dogs, but don't understand their dogs and can't present themselves the right way to people to show the dogs the right way. Um, let's say I have the fastest car in the world and I'm trying to sell this car and there's a lot of people who want to be racers on the street racers. If I can't explain this car and tell you everything about this car legitimately, it's probably be hard for me to try to sell someone this dog. When you educate yourself about the car and you know everything about it, it should flow easy. If you're talking to a breeder and they're stumbling, yeah, man, um, this, this, and that, and then you don't, you're like, man, look, you should be able to bam, bam, bam. This is what you ask some breeders right now. Just ask some breeders where our rock is from. Ask them what, how did this become a, a, the original norm for the rock wall, the nub tails, and ask them where, what was the purpose behind the rock wallers. Just ask simple questions like that before you talk to your breeder. And if they can't answer those simple questions, man, you might just need to say, hey, man, you know what? You may not know what he's talking about. Because just having two beautiful dogs and just breeding them isn't a breeder. Um, you know, some people feel like, hey, I just want to breed one time and get some money back and do this stuff. That's not going to happen. Um, I would love to tell you guys that. And I'm just going to be honest. I feel you guys are family. So, um, so you guys are family. So I want to tell you guys the truth and let you guys know what we're going to look for he's on the camera looking like yeah i said something Let's do something do something so i can't get over this dog is heavy so you see me keep switching my arms and i'm not even trying to exaggerate i'm gonna get some scales on these dogs this week and you can see how heavy these jokers are look at the coat on these jokers man okay i'm not gonna lie i watched them before this video so you know this is but they all stay clean anyway but just to give you a little extra and i used um head and shoulders <laughs> this is the first time i actually used head and shoulders on them um some people are gonna have something to say about that too as well but i don't care um well, what you guys looking for um so next thing you're gonna see is um the the it's a whole process man it's not just one single moment where you're just going to be like hey i got the dogs i'm breeding now I'm having puppies and i'm going to be successful and da, 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 da. no it's time. take your time before you even do it if you look up i see so many breeders like now i mean every day i look around there's a new name such and such kennel such and such kennel such and such kennel this kennel and i'm not i'm telling you i'm not jealous at all trust me it's not um i'm proud of it but i want people to understand that just putting a name on a, these Potential clients, even for them, for you guys to understand before you just say, hey, I'm going to go buy a dog because this guy got a kennel and he got a big male. And biggest one I love. Yeah, they called me about a dog from someone else's kennels. Hey, man, I'm going to buy a dog from this guy, man. What do you think, man? I don't know nothing about the dog. I don't know. I'm not going to say nothing negative about his kennel. I'm not going to say nothing positive. I don't know. I don't follow any other kennels like that. So don't ask me about a single other kennel not out of jealousy i'm not trying to be mean but no one else can tell you about my kennels as in depth as i can you know um people can tell you about their experience if they bought a dog from me but i haven't bought any dogs from anybody in the state so nobody here you can talk to will i can give you a honest answer about like that kennel um and just because someone shows a beautiful picture of a dog like this this dog might be, you know, of course you guys know it's not, but this dog, you find a picture of someone holding a dog like this, and well, like this, and then all of a sudden, you're sitting here saying, man, it's a big, beautiful dog. I want a dog just like that. The camera goes off, and the dog lives in poop, and stays in poop, and dog is just dirty, filthy, and for a picture, they wash it up. Like, I tell people, I mean, shoot, I ain't gonna lie, I watched this dog before the video. I'm not gonna have a, a dog that's, you know, just been eating milk, and food and all this kind of stuff here and dirty and all that kind of stuff I mean realistically I'm not gonna hide it from you guys yeah that's what it is um my dog stay clean yeah but you want that extra little mm, for this video we're gonna be real right we're gonna keep it real we I don't do none of that none of that other stuff man you guys know how I am man um you know so but um but last key point is just be very, be very mindful of when you're getting a dog. Um, make sure you do your research on your breeder. 
I don't even care if it's me. Do your research on me, man. I'm out there. I'm an open book. Um, people buy dogs from me all the time. Um, I post. I don't do any editing. If you watch my videos, I do some editing like noise, sound, or whatever. But you don't see me doing a lot of cutting and this and that. When people talk, my any interview I have, it's all solid. I never edit a video. So even if they say, hey, man, I got a dog from Butler Kennels. And, yeah, they're going to tell you. The most negative thing is going to be they have to wait for a dog, which is fine with me. I don't mind. I'll let you know. There's a waiting list for our dogs. Um, and people will call me and say, hey, man, I watch all your videos, man. You got any dogs available right now? Every single video I have, I always say they're sold out. And I'm blessed because of that. I'm not ever saying, hey, man, look at me. Yo, I'm big. No. Because at the end of the day, God can take it away from you as soon as he gave it to you. So I'm very blessed. And I'm very honored to be in a in the predicament where I, mean, I am uh, tongue-tied like crazy. I'm blessed to be where I am at today. And I don't take it for granted. I am very, very, not lucky, but I'm blessed. But behind, but behind that blessings are a lot of hard work as well too. And you're not just going to four o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. You guys hear some of my videos. I'm sounding like, yo man, get the dog, blah, blah, blah. Man, I'm tired. And I'm still making videos for you guys because I want you guys to understand the hard work that goes behind it. So, you want to be a breeder. Stop. Think about what you really want to do. Think about the time. Think about your family. Think about the dog. Think about how much time and care you have for that. Um, some people some people love dogs and are great with dogs, but not good with people. I don't think it's a good combination of being a breeder because you have to interact with people a lot. Um, some people are majestic, man, as far as when it comes to people and thing and everything else, but they care for the dog, but this, they see it as a cash cow. And when you see that, you're not going to be successful because these are not cash cows. These are little debtors, you know what I'm saying? Honestly, they're going to eat you a house and hole. Um, you know, you leave you leave a bottle around, they're going to eat it up and some dogs um, as well. But most importantly, um, you guys, mm -hmm. Uh, most importantly is make sure that this is something you really want to do because you love this breed or you love whatever breed that you're doing. I'm going to allow you guys watch my page. Tell it. Tell the story. Okay. okay. He's looking at me like, tell it, brother. Tell it. Um, a lot of breeders watch my page who's not Rottweiler breeders or thinking about becoming a breeder or just being a pet owner, man. This is for breeders and pet owners. Um, if you're thinking about doing it and like I said before this is all my my personal um, opinions my personal thoughts um, I share with you guys my experiences I'm not going off something that you know oh we made it so now he's just trying to make it seem no I'm, a, I'm not trying to discourage anybody but you need to be discouraged before you can be successful because if you think everything is glittering gold and then you reach these hard times you're not um, like I said seven years before I even went on a vacation that was grinding every day, putting it in, putting it in, putting this work in, putting this in. Um, if you're going to start something, don't look for others to to depend on. Because if you're starting this program, you need to do it. Don't just have two dogs all of a sudden you got a, you got a kid on name and now you're trying to be a breeder and everything else. Understand it. Ask questions. Um, you know, I don't have a problem answering questions. I just have a problem with people who don't want to do their research first and they just want, just want questions answered. Um, so, um, that's about it, man. I, I, don't, I don't really have that much. I'm not going to just, um, it's already been, what, 30 minutes, 28 minutes now. It's a long time. But I can talk all day, right? Um, yeah, I got, a, I got a surprise coming too, man. I can't wait to say it. But, um, but yeah, that's it, man. So, if you have, if you have some suggestions about what you think also too is, Give me your experience below. You know, I tell you what, tell me your experiences below when buying dogs from breeders. Um, not even if it's from me or anybody else. I don't care. Just tell me your experience of what you thought about what it was that, what were some of the good things when you when you talked to your breeder? It doesn't have to be from me or anybody. Um, whether it's a, I don't care if you bought a schnauzer from someone. What were some of the things that you look for when, you buy your, when you're buying a dog? What's some of the things that turns you off um, from a breeder when you're buying a dog? Um, you know, uh, tell me below. Let me know what you think. And give this thing a thumbs up if this was information informative for you. Uh, if, if some information that I gave today was something that was uh, that would be useful for you. So it doesn't cost you anything to hit a little boom.
And if you didn't like it, man, no, let's give it a thumbs down. No, be truthful, right? We're gonna be realistic. If you didn't like the video, you, you felt like this video wasn't anything positive about it, then give it a thumbs down. Um, but um, and if and if you haven't done so yet, subscribe, like, share, share these videos with your friends, man. Put it on Facebook. Put that hit that copy button, that copy link, and in your Facebook, hit the paste button so people can check it out and see it because knowledge is power, man. If you can share that knowledge, then that's the biggest thing there is um, you go for, right? So, and don't be fooled by this here either, right? Everyone sees the beautiful little puppies playing around and everything else. When this camera goes off, guess what I'm gonna be doing? Cleaning up, doing stuff, fixing this, cleaning up some more, uh, changing pads, all this stuff. So it's got it's gotta get crazy. So I'm um, I, you know, it's it is a beautiful thing, and you and you have to enjoy these moments like this right here, because you get to cuddle up with them. And um, you know, you got some people I've seen people starting pages and doing things, and it's not seem natural. I love my dogs, man. I love my puppies. I'm proud of this. This isn't this isn't like oh, grab the biggest one to litter and try to show it off. Grab the one that came out. The, you know, he did come out. He busted the gate first to me when I opened the door. So I got. Um, I'll show you another man. Well, you guys seen all my dogs next side, side to side. They all big. Every last one of them. Um, I always show my last pick in the in the litter. This one I just haven't done today. I just grabbed this one here. All right. So tell everybody bye bye, man. Say bye bye. Say be blessed, man. And uh, you guys take care. Um, treat each other right, man. Like I always say, be good to one another. Treat each other right and be blessed. Yeah.